Uh, DSW will be the one uh, best able to uh, respond to that. I know that the president is uh, very committed to getting data uh, in some uh, towns of Western Samoa that were affected, in, in fact, including the entire Western Kisangas, Mimaropa, all the way up to Palawan. Okay. All of the nearly 900,000 affected families battled their food. That's the commitment of the president. And, and uh, in my conversations with him, Taman-taman niya, feel na feel niya, yung kahirapan ng ating mga kababayan. Sabi niya na, alam mo, sabi niya, pangatlong Pasko na ito, nalibo ang patay. Ang maaalala natin, yung Sendo, yung Pablo, yung ito si Yolanda. So, talagang uh, committed ng Pangulo na ibabang muli lahat ng mga pamilya. Hindi lang ang nasa Dayton. There's about 275,000 families in data summer. But uh, the larger number of families, not, not as many deaths, but, but larger number of displaced, meaning that na nawala yung bubungan, na, na, na nawala ng bakay, etc. include up to Western Visayas, hanggang sa Mindoro, Palawan, uh, mm -hmm. lahat yun. Oh, okay. Now, um, I know that um, it's already a uh, week two, and clearly there's uh, been a development already in the relief efforts, and also uh, how the government is already um, rehabilitating. There's, you're starting already uh, parang training, kung building, may mga gano'n na kayo doon. Yeah, well, uh, I think that, uh, well, if you don't mind, yeah, please, uh, pictures, say, pictures are, I, I can give you all the statistics, but well, I think pictures, uh, this, okay, is, let's this, see is, uh, this is the global city report. We took this Saturday, okay. the day after the storm. Okay. Wow. May mga tents na pumasok, dahil may C-130 na nga na nakarating. No? So talagang, the water reached the rooftop. The entire airport was underwater. Uh, that was Friday the day before, ito Saturday Sunday. Ito ay is the Global City Airport. Oh, very different. So, talagang nilis na at saka nilis. Oh, so you prepared the roof of the Well, just kasi para people can stay in the house. Okay, I'm curious, as a veteran, before you show the next one, is the Global Airport functional? Is it open? Yes, yes. What can it accept? In fact, it's actually, I've opened the gate, more flights today because they're mostly mercy flights. Okay. You can see 130s from the Philippines as well as other countries. And uh, as well as commercial flights. Uh -huh. There are commercial flights. Na okay. The, are commercial flights? Meron, meron. Daily. Ang problema ng Taklova, which is the problem even before Yolanda, uh, is the apron ng Taklova can only accommodate three aircraft at a time. Okay. So, kung may dalawang naka C-130 dyan na nag-unload, so hindi mo na pwede kung yeah. masok yung susunod. Uh -huh. So, ang ginagawa natin is a sub hub sa Cebu. Kasi international yung Cebu, malaki ang maraming facilities to. So doon muna, tapos ang mga nilibre dito, uh -oh. then papasok yung mga aircraft. So the air tower is fixed? No, no, it's a, it's a temporary, uh, everything is temporary. temporary. Everything had to be brought in because na kung sa Visaya pa, nawaswas. Na talaga na white out na. So, okay, alright, that's the airport. Okay, no, these are the flights. Another, another priority was law and order. Yeah. There were reports of routine. And talaga kung there was routine. Yes, I did this story yesterday. The day after. The day after, yeah. Saturday, Sunday, the Kaluti. Ang augmentation natin, ang pasok tayo ng PNP, about 1,700 additional from the outside. And CRPO, Region 4A, Region 5, 7, 11, lahat yan na dinagdagay ng PNP. Because the PNP in Leyte were all victims also. Diba? So, hindi sila nakarespond ng pandemic. I mean, uh, overnight. Oh. Sa, sa AFP, AFP said both president also ordered in about 3,300 additional military. Okay. So apart from security, guarding the main supply routes, para wala nang ito mga, kasi nung mga mga reports na ginaharap, yeah. yung mga yeah. uh, relief convoy, you know, para, para batayan yan, uh, sila din ang nagmaman ng mga trucks. No? The AFP has nearly 100 trucks na ipinasok doon. Ito yung mga naghahatid ng pagkain. DPWH also has about 100 vehicles, kasama na dyan dump trucks, graders, backhoes, payloaders, ito yung nagdudinis ng kalye, at pati na rin yung nag-coculate uh, ng mga pagkain. Okay. MMDA, halos siguro kung wala kayo makikita ng MMDA dito, may kampo dito ng MMDA, lahat ng mga heavy earth moving equipment ng MMDA, mm -hmm. nandun na rin. Okay. So, there's about, by last counts, about 280 vehicles from the national government. Um, Dinala doon. Para na sila mong sigura, dito ang kina. Anyway, okay. go in order because of the PFP. The uh -huh. So this was taken in Tacloban? Yes, this is Tacloban. Okay, Tacloban. this is Tacloban. This is a very good scene. Okay. Ito yung 
sa mga mga nag-aalmusal, no? mga guys na uh, tumingin, no? ito yung uh, yeah. ito yung cadavers, no? Yeah. Yung sa cadavers, uh, this is the after. Okay, after, after the ritual. Yeah. Fa, sa Tacloban mismo, the Bill of Fire, sila itinalaga natin, kasi may manpower sila. May manpower sila para mag-hapot uh, at magbuhat ng mga cadavers nito. Mm -hmm. Yes, ganun mo. Kasama yung NBI, kasama yung uh, City Health Office, yeah. kasama oh. yung SOCO, sila ngayon nagpo-process ng and they've already been able to recover 2,500 cadavers in the global city alone. Okay. No? Hindi pa bilang dyan yung nasa, nasa mga bayan. Yeah. Lately has about 40 towns. No? Okay. And then yung food and water. Alright, wait, when it comes to the cadavers, sir, no? um, ang tanong is how do you process or how do you count? I mean, I know it's simple to think you count one day, but it doesn't seem that simple when you count the dead. Medyo simple, except that there's two procedures. Eh. Okay. Yung bilang ng Bureau of Fire is bangkay at a dead yeah. uh, kadaver. No? Kinukunan ng kasama nila dyan yung SOCO, yung NBI, kinukunan ng picture yan. Yeah. Kung anong ID na nasa bulsa o whatever in the pockets, yeah. kinukunan nila to try and identify kung sino yung tao. Uh, kinukunan ng fingerprints, no? uh, kung hindi pa ano sa tubig, no? mm -hmm. if it's still possible. And then sinisip sa DOH ba? Okay. Dinadala yan doon sa mass gravesite. Doon sa mass gravesite, sinicheck again one more time, tapos nililigay. Okay. No? Ang um, sa OCD... That's temporary, the mass gravesite? No, that's pretty permanent. Pretty, okay. Pretty permanent. permanent. Maybe oh. it will require later on, pag nag-stabilize na pag nag-stabilize na pag Yung sa OCD, will always be a little bit behind their number because sa kanila, apart from that, kailangan may death certificate. Ah, okay. It's just, a, it's just an administrative procedure para talagang mas sigurado. Oh, okay. Kung baga sa, kung baga sa election, mayroong partial and unofficial, yan ang nakikita mo. Eh, uh -oh. Mayroong yung formal account talaga, no? official, mm -hmm. yan yung OCD ka. Okay. Diba? But uh, as in, even in elections, formal will always be behind uh -oh. the uh, quick count. Okay. I'm sorry to ask this question, but there were some comments I heard. I want to hear it from you. That um, some people feel that uh, the government is consciously trying to keep the numbers down because the president, in a CNN interview, said he estimated the deaths to be only at 2,000. I think that and the policeman who said he estimated the deaths at 10,000 was supposedly sacked. No, well, that's not. Maybe that's just the fog of uh, the fog of okay. calamity or uh -huh. something. Uh, but, uh, the president gave the testing, given the information he knew on day two. Okay. You know, I mean, the, the storm came in Friday, the president was on the ground, on the sea, losing in for himself by Sunday. You know, two days later, he was on the ground. Uh, in fact, we opened the airport Saturday. The first C-130s with Sektin Kisoliman yeah. came in on uh, Saturday. So that was, that was the estimate, given the numbers and the information that was available at that time. As regards the police officer, he was not sad. I mean, there is a procedure in PNP where, given such calamity where the officers themselves are victims, they undergo a uh, briefing and uh, okay. DSWD calls it psychosocial sort of uh, dialogue. It was not know what tensions or stresses at all. So that's the, that's the and, and always in a situation like this, what we want is a cool, steady hand. Diba? So the officer on the ground at the time of the incident, hindi mo matatanggal sa human yan eh, baka gusto mong magpakita, magbabi, na parang mm -hmm. pwede ka, you know, so mag-overreact mag -over naman. Mm -hmm. So what you want is a cool step in the touch hand, uh, lalo na kung hindi, kung hindi biktima. Mm -hmm. no? Para yung judgment niya mm -hmm. ay uh, parang uh, based on facts and, mm -hmm. and physical rather than emotional. Yeah. So, yeah. so Yes. It's not a negative thing on this record. Okay, all right. Next, sir. Uh, go ahead. I no. wanted to know. No, and then this, we just took this one. Really, on day okay. one, day two, we need food and water. And then, uh, this, is, this is just a picture of the uh, of the repacking uh, warehouse that's now in Tacloban. And I think, you know, I can give you a statistic. 1,611,000 food packs. Okay. In fact, it's one six one. I'm sorry, it's uh, 1611489. Okay. 1,611,489 okay. food packs. Okay. Ang nailabas na. This is just for the 40 towns of Leyte, the 15 towns of Eastern Samar that is badly affected, mm -hmm. and the 
more specifically Basay and Marabut in Western Samar that are also badly affected. Okay. So one million sixty. So so yet I do basta in the in the picture, in the drawing, in the plan, physically one million six hundred eleven thousand foot bucks. Ang lumabas. Yeah. Also simula tayo na sa baso baso, hindi tabo tabo, hindi mismo. Siguro naging balde balde, kaya ang conveyo belt na. So, mga kasahan ng mga kababayan natin, every day, we make sure, we try to make sure, every day, all the 40 towns of Leyte, all the 15 towns of East and Samar, and the 5 towns, in particular, kasi ang mga group of Western Samar that are badly affected, get a truck that delivers relief goods. Okay. No? So that, because it also, pampalakas ng gobyerno, it improves morale and they see every day as a government vehicle that comes. This is the baseline. In addition, if a town is able to get a truck and pick up more, then they can also do that. Okay, all right. Now, Secretary, this is, I'm going to ask you this. You have to take me through this. Shana Zambrano, I asked you on radio, but she sent another message yesterday. And she said in Ormoc, there is a DSWD signboard in Ormoc. That's the hub for Western Leyte. Yes. And what alarmed Shana Zambrano was in the last 14 days, the DSWD in their own chart has only served Western Leyte once with two kilos of rice, sir, and I think canned goods. Ang tanong dito, sir, is clearly you have the goods. The government has the goods. Yes. But is there an impracticality somehow with how we are delivering these goods? I, I, okay. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. You know Go ahead. Is, is there. Okay. Yeah. I do know that from the Ormo Khan, serving okay. the 14 towns of Western Lake, facing okay. Cebu. Okay. A total of roughly 335,000 food packs went out. Okay. okay. That's a combination of 175,160 food packs, then I'm looking at my goods, uh -oh. and 160,316 rice packs. Okay. Yan, lumabas yan, saan ko lang bigas na uh, pinapartipan. Uh -oh. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Because uh -oh. the, in the early days, kahit saan ko lang bigas, nilalabas na yan. But because if you have to wait for the time goods and put it together, yeah. it takes time, you know? And so there's not, so sacks of rice, and then hati hati na, because they have the money, could be they have pulag, yeah, yeah. they have other pulag, so kahit lugaw na, yeah, yeah. but at least there is food that goes out. So, okay. so yet yung tinatawag ng rice packs, that's 3 kilos of rice, that is uh, in a 50 kilo sack, mm -hmm. that's about 16, 16 families. Uh -oh. Ang tanong naman ni Congresswoman Lucy Torres when she was on the show, um, how does the government quantify being fully served? Is that serving the community once? Is that coming back to the community, sir, twice a week? Well, the end of the, the or more hard, you know, as I said, the original, we only had so many trucks. So yeah. first, it was the Tacloban hub, which is not because it's Tacloban, but because yeah. that was where the trucks were. Okay. You know, so the moon, there were no trucks in the Ormoc hub. And, and the western side of Leyte was not as bad the gate as the eastern side, which is what faces the Pacific. Okay. Right? okay. And in the early days, the towns themselves were picking up out of Ormoc. Nung dumami na yung truck ng gobyerno, then we sent about 15 trucks to Ormoc. Yeah. So now it's also delivery plus pickup. Okay. What's in Ormoc? What, what, what? So fully served would mean what, Secretary? Like if I were going to well, ask you? We'd hit all the towns. Okay, once? More than once. More than once. More than once. In fact, every day a truck is supposed to either come from the town okay. or come from the government, either okay. Sundo or Hatid, every town, the 14 towns on the western side and, and the 24 towns on the eastern side are supposed to be served. Now, okay. kung ano lang ang dala ng truck, halimbawa a truck, kung rice lang ang dala niya, it can only carry 60 sacks of rice. Dahil... That's small. No, when you think about it. Yeah, but that's all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all the time. Yeah. Because, yeah. kung rice lang yan, it can carry up to 100. Okay. But in this case, it's only 60. Why? Because it also has to carry a security component. Okay. Diba? The soldier yeah. to protect it. It has to carry a... Tanabuhan. That's the PFP. Tanabuhan yeah. component. The establishment of the officers uh, and, other, and other, let's say, medical and oh, oh, yeah. And oh, sometimes fuel. Okay. So, 
yung laman ng gas is must be sacrificed to me. So that's the thing that, and that's why we put it in sacks of rice, so that the community can say, well, tigi isang kilo ba tayo? Let's say, in one sack, yeah, in, 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 in one sack na 50 kilos, kung tigi isang kilo, that's 50 families. Okay. Kung tigda dalawang kilos, that's 25 families. Kung tigda tatlo kilo, that's 16 families. Okay. But the other thing is, yan lang talaga ang dumating today. Bukas, there's another, Oh, oh. 60 sacks of rice. Okay. Tanong, so, tanong, so, okay. Um, okay, good point coming from that. Ang tanong ng ilan, sir, why not just give a sack of rice per family given the logistics of the truck? And the fuel is different. Well, you know, Karen, if that were the case, then the first day, the first truck load, only 60 families will be served. If it's just... Kasi yeah. Yeah. And, and you have to, you have to... These trucks, in the early days, Karen, can okay. only do one trip a day. Oh. Kasi, kasi parado pa yung mga tayo. Yeah. Today, they can do two trips a day. Nakakaroon trip okay. na. Okay. No? Uh, All right. They go out, they deliver, they come back, pick up another load, and they go out and deliver again. Okay. Yung mga malalapit, they can do three trips a day. Okay. Sir. But in the early days, mm -hmm. one trip lang yan, kasi nga barado. Yeah. Eh. Ngayon na bukas na yung mga kanil yan, mas uh -huh. mabilis. Now, as secretary, moving forward, is it possible that your relief hub will be in Tacloban? No, it is already. The no, reason. Secretary Polisi must said like to put the rice in the cloven, the can. Is that possible? And you put up like a cafeteria system? Are you looking at that? Maybe DSWD will be in the best position. Uh -huh. What we do know now is the supply house, no? Is for more supply out of Cebu. Because okay. Cebu is the rest of the province, other than Bantaya and Bogor mm -hmm. in the northern okay. part, uh, is basically okay. So the rice stocks and the can goods and and you know, Cebu is a big, it's a big yeah. hub, no? yeah. commercial hub. So that through Roro through Ro Ro supplies the Pongo okay. hub, which, which supplies the western side mm -hmm. of Lake. Now, do you have a say where the foreign aid goes to? The I mean, as a country, do we have that say? Foreign, well, yes, no, the foreign okay. aid comes in, if it's in general and goes to the government, it goes to the SWD. Okay. If it is specific, let's say the foreign aid says, well, we want to help in particular, but we're not all over the place, we want to help somewhere, then it goes to somewhere. The, the, what the DSWD does is basically allows not just for including domestic aid, including, let's say, the network state. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. 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 yeah, If you decide to go to a particular place, open okay, again. They just mark it down so that from DSWD's point of view, ah, meron na attention dyan, baka yung sino may ba, ba? Uh -huh. So may ganun. May, may, may ganun. Uh -huh. May konti na siya naman. Uh -huh. But you can imagine, Karen, that in the early days, you know, talaga, I use the analogy of emergency room. Emergency room, chaotic talaga yan, because you just have to keep the patient alive. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, so, emergency room, mga the first week is yeah. emergency room. Second week, ICU. Yeah. I would say that an ICU is critical, pero medyo stabilized, hindi na nag-deteriorate. Yeah. So we were able to stop the deterioration, we stabilized it. And now, I would say, we are stabilized, masaya na rin, it's still critical, but we're on our way to the recovery room. And what, what are some of the indications? The indications are, when we go around, the people already start asking about seeds, certified seeds, because they want to touch December, no. December planting. No? They ask about financing for the motors, you know, engines of the banka, mm -hmm. you know, nets. Mm -hmm. uh, they budget for that? I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
of the resort, through the resort, you might know Alan uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, which was opened up pretty much on uh, Monday, Tuesday. Okay, all right. Now, in these cabinet meetings, uh, Secretary, what people are asking on the, the tip, uh, typical, um, I mean, citizens are asking when they see the figures in the newspaper, there's $373 million from foreign aid, a billion dollar concessional loan from the World Bank, $500 million from the ADB, a $25 million grant. Do you discuss this in meetings? What do you do with this money? Well, all of that is going to go. Basically, all the, all the money flow, it's good. Yeah. the numbers are big. Yes. So where does that but it's not, for our, for our viewers, it's not any different than a family budget. Okay. You, you tally up what it means. How many houses have to be yeah. built? How many are totally uh, destroyed, yeah. partially destroyed? Uh, how many, uh, how much is para pauta for the engines, the yeah, motorboat, yeah. the nets, the seats, etc. You tally all of that up, all the aid that goes into a one. So there is one fund of yeah, the aid. Uh, oh, there is. Because it's all given to the Philippine government. Uh -oh, okay. So either in grant, which is big guy, or in puta, the government of the government. So all of that goes into one sort of pocket. All of the needs naman are also listed up, and then you, mm -hmm. and then okay. the naman there. If I were going to ask you, Secretary, what is your priority? Clearly, people see you as the man in charge. No, no, How would you rehabilitate uh, right now? How would you start economic activity? No, I just, I'm just addressed. I'm just a guy in a post. It's a team effort. You know, on day one, on day zero, said both Resmir and I were on the ground. Resmir said as well to make sure yeah, because this was. I, I, I'm in my mid 50s. Okay. I've never seen signal number four in 50 years of life. Uh, my mother, she, she, she's in her 70s. Yeah. In 70 years of life, she's yeah. never seen a signal number four. This kind of. Uh, so, when the president was getting all of this uh, information, he said, uh, you know, and he even took the unprecedented step of going in there to tell the people, this is not the yeah. usual signal number two. So, you know, we are visited by about 25 typhoons every yeah. year. So, baka, oh, typhoon lang yan. But for, foreigners were even surprised you didn't have a cell phone. Well, everything was washed away. Yeah. Right? No, but it, you had a cell phone. Oh, oh, we don't see. Right. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, so, in fact, the first communication okay. was at 2 o'clock Saturday morning. Okay. When an army unit was set by the president from somewhere, mm -hmm. they drove partially and okay. they walked about. 10 oh. 15 kilometers to look for set and myself. Okay, yeah. So, Secretary, I don't need to cut you, but we don't have enough time. What would your priority be? Well, you know, Do you, the, are you working on a timeline? No, the, president, the president's priority is very, very clear rehabilitation, reconstruction. I mean, basically, in the he's not going to let this be. In fact, even as we speak tomorrow, the press is going to go back to Bohol. I mean, you know, if we might forget, no? but a month and a half ago, we had the Lindor in Bohol. So, what's the priority, sir? Like, with this area? But, but as, it, as in all things, the priority will change. Okay. In the early days, it's really just. Relief. Really? Okay, and relief, really. Now, we're going to go to the people's country. Yeah, okay. And, uh, and uh, it would seem to me that the priority is twofold. One is getting the people their livelihood okay. to enable them oh. to get their livelihood. You said and food for work and cash for work, yeah. you know, okay. And then shelter. Okay. Uh, because December now, you know, all of this bronchial and other diseases, right, it might become a bigger problem. Okay. Later. So that's why the president directed the PWH to build some bunkers. The bunkers, yes. Yeah. The yeah. tents. No? Oh. And, and if you will note, the appeals for help from the government started from mm -hmm. food, yeah. Now became tents. Yeah. And then became the now uh, reconstruction and, and, and oh. uh, GI sheets and yes. other things. No? So, okay. So Your this, last, I uh, have two more photos. This, no, this is just to show you. Okay. This, this was about several days the Astodome, which is one of the major evacuation centers. Uh -huh. And this is also. Yeah. Just oh, this is a big change. Yeah, so this was this is a big the, physical the, change. The Philippine Navy. I'm going to warn you that it's even within the government. Uh, Philippine Navy, uh, well, first of all, the task force commander is General Bellarmino of the Armed Forces. 
Philippine Navy um, under Commodore Yoma, sila yung buminis nito. Okay. Tapos ang, ang point nun, sabi ng DOH was, mm -hmm. uh, magiging uh, health hazard yan eh, yeah. kung hindi linisin. So, nilinis nila. Uh, Bureau of Fire gave the hoses, uh, uh -huh. so Okay, this was the capital before. This was the capital. Okay. Uh, yeah, but are you saying now there's, there's, there's a gen set? Gen set. Okay, this is a gen set. I think this is more, this is at night, this is really for moral, for oh. the general population. Uh, Symbolic, no? Uh, Tumatayo ang gobyerno, uh, nandiyan sila, hindi sila uh, nagawa. Uh, 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 but, uh, but inside are all the evacuees also that are uh, uh, Now we have a problem with many people leaving. Um, later, frankly, so ng marami, how would the city be revived when people have left? I think no matter how many have left, there's a su sufficient substantial population that, that is there. I mean, if you think about it, the maximum a load of a C-130 is about 100 people. Okay. And kahit, kahit every day 100 people, hindi dadang na masyad yun. Uh, an LST ship was able to carry about 2,000 people, but there's only been so many ground trips oh. of the LST ship. So, there is, I mean, hundreds of thousands, millions are in yeah. the global data area. Uh, and gentlemen, mm -hmm. talaga na. Now, Secretary, sorry to ask this question, but where is Mayor Alfred Romualdez in all this? It seems that the national government has clearly taken over. But what is what is the role of the well, mayor? Well, it's, in, it's in a partnership basis, no? But uh, they really, they work with him? They talk to him? Yeah, okay. every, I mean, every day there's a coordination meeting at the regional level, so it's both the global, the later and the entire region. Uh -oh. uh, so you're asking concern. him to sign wasn't true? No, no. Did you know that issue? I heard yeah, that, that issue that they were asking him to sign that he wouldn't dysfunction. That, that was taken out of context. Okay. Because in the early days, the leadership of the city, in particular the mayor, congressman, the other leaders in the city, were saying, impose a curfew. You know, take, uh, take over, in effect, was a white outcome. So I, I said, ipasan niyo ng ordinansya. Just like in San Juan, they pass an ordinance para malinaw the responsibilities. Yes, yes, yes. One day, two days. Four days later, wala pa ordinance. So, for me, particularly for PFP, we were imposing a curfew na wala pa ordinance. I see. Diba? So, sa akin po, kahit isulat mo na lang. That, that was it. So, you said isulat mo yung... Yung request, oh. bakit may pinangahawakan yung PFP at saka si Presidente, bakit siya nag impose ng curfew, wala pa ordinance? Diba? Bakit kaya nagtitake over, walang request from the law? Diba? I mean, yun yun. Yun yun. Yun yun. Yun lang yun. Yun lang yun. So, hindi ko na alam. Eh, nandun na kami, nakatutok sa tatlo ba nga sa, oh. sa late. Eh. Hindi ko na alam kung ano yung spin, ano yung nangyari dito. No? But, but basically, ang, ang healing was, you're asking the national government to do certain things. Pwede bang ipormal lang natin? Now, you cannot convene your council. Their council only had two councillors on site that first week. They yeah. did not precisely convene the council to pass the ordinances. So the suggestion was, isulat mo na lang bilang mayor, sabihin mo na lang, no? please impose a curfew. Please, uh, you know, bring in uh, yeah. go goods, materials, equipment, etc. But, okay, no? we, even without that, by the way, until now, we still don't have that. No? Yeah, no. Okay. But my curfew, my curfew is not the one. That's what I'm saying. It is a de facto curfew. A de facto curfew. Rather than a de jure curfew. Because oh. wala, so, but the point I'm trying to make is notwithstanding that, there's about 5,000 uniformed personnel, PLP and ALP, mm -hmm. that, that have come in. There's about uh, 280, nearly 300 vehicles, MMDA, DPWH, AFP. Every unit of government brought in vehicles, brought in people. Regional directors from other regions who brought in because tulalang na yung mga talento because they were victims. Eh. Okay. So, so tuloy tuloy ang, ang tulong ng national government. And, and this is unfortunately one of those distractions mm -hmm. that really is dangerous. Okay. Um, Secretary, we don't have enough time, but I want to ask you, Christian Amanpour asked President Aquino, do you think it will define his presidency? I want to ask you, do you think this will define the administration, frankly? How? How are the administration responded, acted on Yolanda and the rehabilitation? This is a significant event. No? But I don't think that any one event defines six years of good governance that the president has brought to the country. The impeachment of the Chief Justice, that I think is a defining moment. 
the changing of the ombudsman so that you have somebody who is impartial rather than uh, you know viewed somebody viewed as partial to the previous. That is a defining moment. The way the president handled with calm, with steadiness, with firmness, Samboanga. Samboanga, there was like 500 people armed. So Samboanga, there was a lot of money, there was a lot of money, there was a lot of money. It's an entirely different thing. I think that is a defining Okay. The way the president has handled it. You know, every year, beginning with Sendo, Pablo, Typhoon, uh, 20 typhoons a year, Lindol. I mean, the president handles that, and it's his government that handles that. So I think that all of this uh, will be put together, and I think that the president uh, will, will come out uh -huh. looking very, very good. Okay. Secretary, lessons learned. I mean, I know it's not time for post mortem yet. Secretary Cesar Polisim has often said this when I interview, but. I mean, give me a quick lesson learned. Um, I mean, with, from the whole administration. Well, I, I, I can just speak, let's say, from our personal experience. On day two, Sunday, the president okay. was there, no? and uh, he was impatient because how come there's no activity, there's yeah. no action? Uh, there was a, a local resident that was saying that there was duty going on. No? And the reality was, when we asked the chief of police, only 20 policemen showed okay. up. Yeah. So you cannot do much with 20. Okay. Well, <laughs> so one of the lessons is that when you have something like this, all the families of all the first responders should be brought to higher ground. That way, the first responder on day one is not worried about his family. But I think that that's uh, that's a lesson. If you have a little bit of a family, then you can see that. Okay, but if you have a family of police, a family of soldiers, a family of bombers, a family of city officials or municipal officials, kahit inconvenient, di kas kayo lahat. Dahil on day zero and day one, yung inyong patay ng manay, whoever is working, is needed to respond to other people, not to think of you. That's one. That's one. I think that's one clear, but that's one clear. So inside the rest of oh, it, that, all right. that came about. Okay, all right. And, and, and it's 9 o'clock in the morning, but quickly, can you do it in two seconds? Anything you want to say? To end the show? Just, just, oh. just uh, you know, the, the government is there. Uh, if you want to help, if you still, people still want to help, Martillo, Paco, GI Sheet, Tarpoli. We are now on the food side, it's already sort of stabilized. And what the people are now beginning to think about re re rebuilding, reconstructing their homes mm -hmm. and so their dwellings. So if you're going to continue to help uh, organizations, NGOs, whatever, yeah, Martillo, Paco, Lagare, Tarpole, Gineshi, because that's what they're thinking of. Yung mga mas mayayaman, what they call chainsaw or chainsaw, you know? Na dahil madami na hulong na nyo, madami na tumba na nyo, and gagamitin ng Coco number to build them. Okay, all right. Thank Secretary Malomas, thank you so thank you. much, sir. That's Head Start today on Karen Davila. Replay of this interview is at 6 p.m. tonight, 4.30 a.m. tomorrow. We currently appeal. Take care, everyone, and have a good day.